Hello and welcome to WePC. My name's Jack and today we're going to be building the PC with the best airflow we can. Finally, something that might be cooler than I am. Before we get into it, can I please ask that you like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. It really helps us out. So what do I mean when I say best airflow? Well, we're going to be focusing on two main components. AIO and case. We'll get into them in more detail later, but these are essentially the most important components to consider when it comes to airflow. And fans, but since both our case and the AIO come equipped with fans, we'll just be using them. First up is the motherboard, and I've gone for the B550XE, because, well, it's a pretty boy. You're also a pretty boy. Oh, uh, thank you, Jay. And comes packed full of all the features you would need in any modern PC, such as PCIe Gen 4, USB 3.2 Gen 2, and a few onboard cooling solutions. CPU. I've opted for the 12 core, 24 thread Ryzen 9 5900X. Clocked in at a base clock of 3.7 GHz and a boost clock of up to 4.8. This CPU chews through anything you can throw at it, whether that be heavy gaming or workflow tasks. RAM's up next, and we've spared no expense and gone with a 32GB kit of 3600MHz Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. 3600MHz being the recommended speed to support Ryzen processors, as the speed in which Ryzen cores communicate is directly correlated with RAM speed, and Corsair RAM always looks good in a Corsair case. Speaking of, to contain all of our components, I opted for the Corsair 7000D, the bigger brother of the 5000D. With room for up to a 420mm radiator on the side and the front, and up to a 360mm radiator up the top. This bad boy can fit a total of 12 120mm fans, or 7 140mm, with a whole plethora of features not just limited to airflow. This case certainly plays the part, and looks the part as well. You know what else looks good? We PC in your subscription feed. Make it happen. Shameless plug aside, the plugs we won't be setting aside, however, are the ones that go into our PSU, the Fractal Design Ion Plus 860 Watt. This fully modular PSU will be more than enough to power our breezy beast and keeps unnecessary cables to a minimum, with an 80 plus platinum efficiency optimized for electrical performance and near silent operation. There's no other choice in my mind. Storage is a Samsung 860 Evo, a perfectly capable SSD that happens to contain my benchmark OS. We're just using it for simplicity's sake. You'll most likely want to slap an M.2 SSD in this PC, as there's plenty of support for it on our motherboard. The CPU cooler I have here is one very cool cooler. <laughs> so funny. The Asus Ryujin 2 360mm, an AIO cooler that excels in many areas, and a cooler I'll be doing a full video review on in the next few days. So look out for that if you want more details. The main reason I chose this cooler is because of its obvious ability to cool. Well done, Captain Obvious. It's all thanks to the radiator being the very efficient 3120 Noctua IPCC fans, capable of up to 2000 RPM, pushing 121.8 cubic meters per hour of air. To drive the frames in our cool boy, we have the GeForce RTX 3080 Ti, with 10,240 CUDA cores all clocked in at 1665MHz on the boost clock, with an impressive 12GB of GDDR6X VRAM. We're sure to have no performance problems here, even at 4K. Here are our benchmark clips. So here we are then in control, in 1440p. We're getting a comfortable 132 FPS average with 1% of 106 and 0.1s of 53. Same can be said in 4K, pretty comfortable with averages of around 68, 1% of 62 and 0.1s of 58. Cyberpunk 2077 still runs about as well as a three-legged donkey with 81 FPS average, 71% and 0.1% of 64. The situation only worsens in 4K, with averages of around 40 FPS, 1% lows of 36, 0.1s of about 35. Not very good. Days Gone, a little less intensive now, with averages of 160 FPS, 1% of 88, 0.1s of 70. Great performance. In 4K then, we get about a 94 FPS average, with 71% and 0.1% of about 41. 
shooting zombies was never so smooth in 4K. Far Cry 5 gives us an average of 130 FPS with 92.1% and 0.1% of 71. In 4K, the story is pretty similar, very good performance, with averages of about 105 FPS, 71% and 0.1% of 53. Resident Evil Village then, and in 1440p, we have a pretty comfortable average of around 188 FPS, with 1% of 169 and 0.1% of 164. In 4K, the story again is very similar. This is a very capable PC, offering us good averages of about 110 FPS, 1% of 102 and 0.1% of about 99. Rust, my absolute favourite game, glad it made it on the list, gives us a beautiful average of about 120 FPS with 1% of 75 and 0.1% of 63. In 4K, we still get an average of about 100 FPS, which is pretty good, 1% of 78 and 0.1% of about 69. Well, there you go guys. That was our best Airflow PC build. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked the video and subscribe if you want to see videos similar to this one. All the products will be linked down in the video description if you fancy treating yourself. All right, this has been Jack from WePC and I'll see you in the next one.